Hi, if you are a business owner using Google Forms and Google Sheets in your business, then this video is for you. Hi guys, I'm Kevil Kishin, India's leading business automation coach. In past eight years, I've been helping manufacturers, traders, service providers, 25 plus industries, helping business owners to manage their business effectively on Google application. And in this quick, awesome tutorial, I'm going to share with you seven Google Sheet tips which will help you to manage your Google Sheets data effectively, sharing the you know sheets with your teammates, and you'll be able to control it even a better way. So these seven tips are going to be very useful for you. Let's start with the first one. A lot of times we want to share Google Sheet with our teammates, but we don't know should we share it in editing rights or sh should we share it as a viewer, right? And then a lot of people get confused that will the teammate will be able to download the data will they be able to share it further with them and if you don't want that how can you restrict your teammates doing the same so let's see on how can we uh, share the google sheet with our teammates so you can share in this uh, you can see in the screen uh, in the google sheet there's a button here called share and right now it shows that it's only private to me when i click here it opens the option of sharing with people and groups now this is where you write the email address of your teammates and when you do that, it gives you the option three type of sharing rights. First is via viewer. It means your teammates can view it, but they cannot edit it. Second is you want them to, you know, make a comment on any of the cells which they want to make some changes in. Then you can share it as form of the commenter. But if you want to your team to make changes in the Google Sheets, then you can go for choosing the editing rights as well. Right now, before I tell you the uh, you know more things on this. Let me tell you, with each and every type of sharing right, there is a setting button at the top. For example, if I share it as a viewer, and if I click here, then there's a two options here that viewers and commenters can uh, download, print, and copy. If you disable this option, guess what? Your teammates will not be able to download the Google Sheets, making it, you know, uh, you know, making it secured for you, and your team will not be able to download it on their uh, laptop and they will not be able to even print or make a copy of it second is if you share it as an editor then it says the editor can change the permission and can share with others now if you want that your teammates should not have the rights to share the google sheet with somebody then you can also uncheck this as well now a lot of people know this rights but this is something unique which a lot of people don't know so i hope this first uh, tip was useful for you that depending upon the role of your teammate you can give three options editor viewer and commenter right so how was this first tip tell me now let me help you go for another tip now another tip is that a lot of teammates a lot of business owners ask me that cable if we are working on google sheet and guess what if internet goes off right can we and our teammates work on google sheet offline yes you can okay let me help you understand on how can you use google sheet even when there is no internet okay so for that, you can see my screen. Uh, there are all the tabs given here, file, editing, view, insert. Now in the file tab, you can see there's a beautiful option here called make available offline. Now, when you click on this, it changes the status of all Google documents from online to offline. So in fact, if I go offline, it will share, it will save that data on my laptop. Okay. And when the internet comes up again, then it syncs that offline data to the Google cloud. So if you want to work uh, when there is no internet, make sure you switch on this option even before the internet goes off, right? And if you are in a network where internet goes on and off back to back, then it's always better that you make your files available offline as well. Tell me, how was this takeaway for you? Now, let me help you understand the third takeaway as well. A lot of business owners, you know, get confused that if their teammates make any change in the Google Sheet, right, how can we track it, whether they have made any changes or not? I'll tell you, you know, many years back, I used to use Excel in my business. And, you know, I went on a family trip for a couple of days. And when I came back, one of my teammates made so many changes in Excel files, and they ended up, you know, deleting a couple of columns as well, which had a lot of formulas. And I had no way to actually track back on what was the changes made and I could not recover the lost data as well. But guess what? Google has been a revolution for business owners because it has given a beautiful feature called version history where you can track all the changes made by you or your teammates. Now you want to know where is this exact feature called version history? Let me show you. 
Now here you can see uh, there is a tab called help. At the right side of it, it shows last edit was 21 minutes ago. And if I hover over it, it shows open version history. Yes. Now this is called version history feature. When you click on it, it will show you all the changes made by your teammates either today or yesterday or day before yesterday or even one week before, right? And when you see other versions here, you click on any of the versions. So that particular file and their data, uh, you know, comes online. So for example, if a teammate deletes the data, okay, last day, so you can check the previous versions and you can click and you can take the data back again. So this version history feature is a revolutionary feature for business owners who, you know, where, you know, you, you want your teammates to make a lot of changes in parallel, but you want to track as well on what are the changes that they are making. Tell me in the chat box, out of these three takeaways, which one has been the best for you? Well, guess what? Four more are left and the last one is going to completely open your mind. So let me share with you the fourth tip of today. Okay. A lot of people want to connect a Google form with Google sheet. So when you create a Google form, uh, you can directly connect with Google sheet. But if you are having an existing Google sheet already and you want to insert a Google form in that, how will you do the same? So let me share with you on how can you connect a Google form or how can you create a Google form from an existing Google sheet, which is already in place. So let me share with you. Here you can see that we have already have an existing Google sheet. And when you click on the option called tools, in the tools, it shows you the option called create a form, right? Now here, when you click here, it opens a Google form and it says, new form created, add your questions here. So when you click here, it opens a new Google form altogether, which you have created from a Google sheet itself. Okay. So here, for example, you're writing some questions, you're writing name. Then here you are adding another question called email. Then you are writing another question called contact number. And let's see whether these columns have been created in Google Sheet or not. So have a look here. A new Google Sheet has been created, which is called Form Responses 2, which is connected with Google Form, which you have just created from Google Sheet, right? So if you open it on this button called Preview, you open it up and here I am writing a sample data. And when you click on Submit, have a look. It has captured the data itself. So a lot of people ask me, okay, well, from a Google form, we can connect a Google sheet. But if you're already having an existing Google sheet, can we create a Google form from that? So I think this is something which is going to help you a lot. Next Google sheet tip. How can you copy a spreadsheet from one uh, Google sheet to another Google sheet? Okay. So let me help you understand the same. For example, we have two workbooks. One is called sample and one is called sample one. So for example, if I want to copy this sheet to another worksheet, so for that, when I click on right click, it shows me the option called copy to, and that's where I get two options, either new spreadsheet or existing spreadsheet. So when you click on existing spreadsheet, uh, you click on recent and it will show you all the Google sheets, which you're already having in your Google drive. So you can see there's another workbook, which you're already having when you click here and you click on select. So it is copying the worksheet to a different sheet altogether. So let's see. So have a look. Yes. In the ne uh, next workbook, we have got a copy of the worksheet, which is, you know, the worksheet from the different workbook altogether. So this is how you can make a copy of one worksheet to different workbook altogether in just one click. Right now, let me take you through another Google sheet tip. Now, a lot of times we, when we create Google sheets, it all gets scattered in our Google drive where we are not able to find out which Google sheets we have in which of the folders. Now I'm going to help you understand how can you move Google sheet to any specific folder in Google drive that you want. So let's understand on how to do the same. So when you see this option called file and when you click on file, it has an option called move. Okay. So when you click on the move, it opens the Google drive. Okay. And that's where you see all these folders, including uh, you know, all the folders name that you have. So you can kind of, you know, click on any of the folders and click on move here and it will be moved to that particular folder itself. Right? So this is how easy it is to move a Google sheet to any specific folder 
that you want now the last tip is going to be really awesome for you okay now you can see here we have got a google form which has got name email address contact number and couple of other questions which we are asking from the client now for example if i preview it it has got these uh, five questions uh, which are in this alignment name email address contact number which category are you interested in and do you want to take a demo yes no or maybe now it's a simple google form now imagine you have your own google form with a set of questions which are connected in google sh sheets in terms of these columns but for example if you want uh, that you want to realign these columns for example you want this column to come in the starting or you want this column to come before this so will you have to realign these google form questions as well to adjust in google sheets or can it directly be done from google sheet all together yes it can directly be done using google sheet let me show you how for example if you want are you interested to take a demo yes or no if you want it to be going to the starting you can just go to the top of this column and you can just left click and drag it from here and you can take it to the first or you know second or third position that you want but guess what it has not changed in google form so when you fill the data the data on the Google form from the customer side will be for, uh, filled in the same alignment. But here you will get in the way that you have right now. So let's see. So I've got simple, simple data here filled, right? And let me just click on submit and have a look. Here in Google Sheet, we've got the data. And in Google form, it was the last question, which was, are you interested to take a demo? And it is right now we are getting in the C column in between. So the best part is that in Google Sheets, you can realign your columns based on your requirement and the data will be picked from Google Forms in the same way that it was picking up before you realign the columns. Now, this was it from my side in this quick tutorial. If you want to learn more about Google from Google Sheets, you can check out other tutorials of mine as well. And if you've loved the content, make sure you click on the subscribe button, hit the bell icon and share it with your friends, the business owners who want to grow their business. I'll see you in the next lesson.